we'll get into this. All right, cool. So thank you guys for joining. Like I just said, we just passed 20, 22 people in the webinar. So thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. I think this is our 34th ever knowledge drop and a really cool subject that I'm excited to get into with Jill here. Um, basically just automation and all the ways that she's used that to help other companies and other people and different ideas um, scale out and become less, you know, reliant on manual labor. Um, so I'm going to pass the mic to her in a second, but just before that, just some of the housekeeping stuff. If you guys haven't joined the knowledge drop or it's just been a while, uh, there's the chat box, which all you guys are using already. Just make sure it's sent to all panelists and attendees if you want everybody to know the funny jokes you're, text, you're typing into the chat box. And then there's also a question and answer box. So if you have a question that comes up as Jill's going through her deck, feel free to type it into there. And then hopefully we'll have five or maybe even 10 minutes at the end of this um, knowledge drop to, to do some live questions with, with our guest of honor here, Jill. And also, as I mentioned, this is getting recorded. So this will end up in the knowledge drop blog archive in a couple of days time. So you can share this um, with anybody you think it might benefit or just rewatch it again and, and soak it in even more. And yeah, with all that out of the way, let me pass it over to you, Jill. Thanks again for doing this. This is awesome. I can't believe it's taken us 34 knowledge drops to get to the subject. It's super, super relevant. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, great. So I'll just share my screen uh, and dive okay. right into it. Cool, cool, cool. So the topic today uh, is automation. So automation for uh, small businesses, um, entrepreneurs, consultants uh, who are working remotely specifically. Um, I'm hoping that this will be really helpful for you uh, in whatever it is that you're doing. There's, there'll be some way to apply it. Um, so uh, with that said, we'll go right into discussing uh, what's about to drop. Uh, so by the end of this, I'm hoping that you'll be rethinking uh, everything that you're doing in your business. Maybe you're thinking about the different sets and the processes that you're using right now and how they could be more efficient. Uh, and also having a strategic uh, growth strategy to handle more clients effectively. Uh, and you'll also have uh, practical automation uh, tips uh, and tricks uh, to know how to save time in your day to day so you can spend more time enjoying where it is that you are around the world. Uh, and why I'm dropping this topic is because I'm super passionate about small business, about efficiency and automation. Um, I truly believe there's always a better way to do something and reconsidering a problem from maybe a 50 foot view uh, can really give you more perspective on how to improve a process. Um, I've helped you know, businesses 10X their revenue by implementing automation, so that increases their um, their efficiency, the ability to handle more clients. Um, I've helped, I actually just counted before this call, about 80 companies now, uh, small businesses um, all over the world. So you can really see that there's, there's patterns with what people need and even on different industries or uh, how old these businesses are, there's always ways to improve. Uh, and of course, I've personally set up my business to automate more tasks so I can handle uh, being on remote year as a consultant. Uh, so with that said, uh, we can jump right in. Uh, so imagine uh, knowing that you, your emails are being sent, your clients are being invoiced, new sales are coming in, and you're not at your desk. Uh, this is all happening without you needing to drive this uh, force. Uh, it's all automated. Uh, and you could be out there enjoying the beach or wherever it is that you are around the world. Uh, and so this would be from the power of automation. So what is automation? It's the ability to create a business that runs without you. Um, so you do the work once, you set it all up, and then it's the gift that keeps on giving. And you can build upon it uh, and improve uh, all of your processes and, and automate uh, from there. Uh, so why would you care about this specifically? Um, so you wanna be more productive and you wanna be more profitable without having to clone yourself. You only have so many hours in a day and there's only so much time that you can get things done as far as tasks or administrative things or reminders. Uh, it really takes a lot of time to go through your inbox. Uh, and generally time is just not a resource that you can multiply. Uh, and so some stats that I found relevant to uh, 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 automation uh, would be uh, buyers who chose, 95% of buyers who chose a vendor that provided content to progress them through the sales process ended up uh, purchasing from that person. So. Uh, the more content that you're sharing automatically, the more that you're likely to close that sale. Uh, and marketing automation users saw an increase in conversions 77% uh, of the time. 
So that sounds awesome, right? Uh, so first things first, uh, you need a strategy. Uh, so when it comes to automation, you might wanna get started with uh, just automating different tasks here and there, but having a real strategy and a customer journey uh, that can really help you automate every step along the way. So let's get clear on wait, what a customer journey is. So questions you might wanna ask yourself uh, would be, how do people find you? Uh, where are you sending them when they do? So say you have an ad, are you sending them to fill out a form? Or do they not know how to work with you? Uh, so making sure that it's very clear that they have a call to action. Uh, are you progressing them through the buying process? Are you onboarding them? Are you nurturing your relationship with them? Are you checking in and making sure that you're providing the right service for your ideal client? So some of you might already be familiar with the terms pipeline or customer life cycle or customer journey or top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. There's a lot of terms out there as far as what this is. And this uh, graphic here isn't mine specifically, but it's one that I found that encompasses a lot of the different touch points required to progress people through the customer life cycle. Uh, and it always will start with awareness and progress to loyalty. So you're looking to convert your leads or your prospects into customers and then keep them nurtured uh, and coming back to you. Uh, so when you're considering your customer life cycle journey, you might wanna consider the different goals that you're trying to achieve throughout the process of working with you. So are you looking to add the contact to your CRM? Are you looking for them to download a PDF? So you have an ebook that they need to download. Maybe that's a great way to start collecting your leads. Or a schedule consultation. You can't help them until you've actually spoken with them. So getting them in your calendar is really important. And so those milestones that help them progress through their stages of working with you are goals that you should focus on and maybe list out considering the sequence of how uh, this happens when they, someone tries to work with you. Uh, and so uh, we can talk about a specific case study. Uh, so uh, on remote year, I've coordinated or collaborated with other uh, remotes in Sisu uh, and helped them automate more of their businesses. So uh, Aaron is a uh, brand consultant uh, who's here with me. Uh, she has a business called Women on a Mission and she needed a campaign for a free consultation. So prior to having any of this automation, it was more so. Uh, just like a, a web form she would get an email and then follow up with them from there with this uh, with automation implemented you're able to automate the whole steps uh, involved with a free consultation campaign so here we're considering one specific goal and that's to get prospects to a free consultation the tools that we have available to us would be a website so squarespace uh, and as you can see on the right hand side there's a book your free consult called action button on the website. Uh, the other tools used would be Acuity scheduling. So for the online uh, booking link, Zoom meetings uh, for meeting with the client and Infusionsoft for automating communications and Zapier to tie it all together. So uh, considering that is your one goal and those are the resources we have, uh, what would be the sequence required to get them into a consultation. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is where you're thinking about your processes. And uh, if it was that you're looking to promote a specific ebook, do they need to download the PDF? If you're looking for a consultation, uh, send the calendar booking link or a task to create a proposal. Uh, so all of the sequences are the steps that occur uh, to convert them from, to complete that goal. So considering uh, the sequence related to this specific case study, uh, we're looking to uh, click the call to action on the website to fill out the form. Uh, so we need a web form where they can enter in their information specific to their business, maybe their website, so that way we can get some background information. Any other pre-qualifying questions you have for them, you can include them there. Uh, and that really helps with segmenting and, and really customizing and personalizing communications with that client or prospect. Uh, of course, keep in mind though, the fewer questions you ask on a first uh, web form might be better for conversions. Uh, then from them completing the web form, you'll want to send them the booking link to schedule an appointment. Uh, so in this case, we use Infusionsoft and a campaign 
uh, that would automate the emails uh, to remind them to book that call until they actually do. Uh, and to track when they have booked that consultation. Uh, so they'd have to book that consultation in Acuity. Acuity would create the Zoom link uh, and send off the reminders. Uh, and so the, the appointment reminders are also reminded uh, maybe the day before, the day of. Uh, that limits the amount of no-shows you have. It also makes it completely touch-free for you. You can be looking just at your calendar to see who's, who you're meeting with that day. But all of the steps that they took prior to meeting with you were done automatically. You didn't need to touch points or you know, have phone tag with them trying to figure out when you can meet with them. Uh, so, and then you would have your consultation on Zoom. Uh, and so this would be a visual representation of how I built this campaign in Infusionsoft uh, specifically. Um, so we can see that the goal that triggers this campaign to start uh, is a web form being submitted or a landing page submission. So you can use landing pages or ads, or if you wanted to promote them elsewhere, uh, that's great to have some visual uh, credibility to convert them. Uh, and then from there, they're put into a sequence where they're reminded uh, for, you know, to book their appointment and sent the link to book it online. Um, and this sequence will end uh, once they have booked that, that call. Uh, and that's automated with Zapier and Acuity. So when an Acuity appointment is scheduled, the Zap triggers a tag to be applied and they're uh, converted to a tag updating uh, sequence. But, but it also could be an appointment reminder sequence. Uh, that currently is still in Acuity. Um, and you can see there's also an aspect of this campaign where we've set up an internal form to put in the outcome of that call. Uh, and depending on what product they were recommended, they have different uh, nurture follow-up to convert them to a customer. Uh, so that would be one example. Please let me know if you have any questions. I know this is probably pretty uh, confusing as at a first look, uh, so I'd be happy to go into it further. Um, so things to consider when you are uh, automating your business. Uh, so the keys to success would be uh, build on what works. So if you already have made you know, maybe one to five sales, then you probably have some type of process for how that occurred. Uh, you know, and even more, the more the better. Uh, so if something, if you know what your clients like and how they like to be communicated with and how they like to engage with you, keep that and build upon it. Uh, don't start from scratch just because you can, or you know, because it's hypothetical uh, that it would work. Uh, do have one clear call to action. Uh, so in any of your communications, as far as landing pages or emails, make sure that you're being very clear on what action you need them to take. Uh, your clients want you to be taking them by the hand and directing them through your customer life cycle. So do so. Uh, and then do follow up. Uh, make sure that you're staying engaged with all of your lists, um, whether they're prospects, or their past clients, uh, that's really where you can get the most value out of the leads that you are spending good uh, like ad revenue on. Uh, and do create a return path. Uh, and so a return path would be a specific product or a way to get people back into your pipeline. Um, so if there's another service that you can maybe up promote them to, if there's like an ongoing retention or if there's some other way that you can keep them engaged and coming back to you for more, uh, that is a great, another way to maximize the value of your list. Uh, and do encourage referrals, reviews, and testimonials. I know a lot of people drop the ball after they've finished the project with their clients. You, know, you send your invoice, that's it. You don't hear from them again. They don't hear from you again. Uh, it's really important at that point when they're happy to get the referral, to get the testimonial, uh, and also uh, to get reviews so they can send more and more traffic back to you and you can build upon your, your business. And that's a really a great way to scale. Uh, don't. So ways to get de derailed. Don't get in your own way. Uh, don't start without a strategy. Uh, don't be a perfectionist. Uh, so I know a lot of people want their content to be 100% perfect before they send it out. Uh, it's really important to just uh, follow the 80-20 rule. Make sure that something is 80% to your satisfaction and get it out there and get some feedback. Uh, and you can always build upon and build upon until it's closer to perfect. Uh, don't send an email without a call to action. Uh, there's always a, a direction you can send them in, whether it's connecting with you on social media, whether it's learning about something specific, visiting your website. Make sure that, that uh, they know exactly what to do with an email. Otherwise, uh, it's 
you know, it's a wasted opportunity. Uh, and don't make assumptions without data. So make sure that you're tracking you know, the open rates, the click-through rates, and really modifying upon what your customers are responding to. Uh, and you know, you could build something up, but until you actually see how how it's performing, then you you, uh, you don't really know. So yeah, so um, the homework would be to uh, think about each step that you're taking in your business, map your customer journey as it is now, and, and then consider the gaps. You know, look, add steps to the customer journey that it might be missing. Uh, and then that's where you have a, a plan laid out uh, where you can structure and automate. So look at each process individually and find ways to make it more efficient. You know, if there's specific information that you could be collecting and segmenting and communicating them on uh, with them on, you know, use that in your CRM. Uh, use marketing automation, calendar booking tools. There are thousands of apps out there uh, that are built around making your business more efficient. Um, often what I'll do is check uh, the Zapier ads listing, honestly, uh, and, and see what speaks to each other. So that way, all of your tools will be able to uh, be on the same system and you can automate more. Uh, and that will allow you to grow your business. So if you would like to stay in touch, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on Slack. Uh, I'm at Jill. Uh, you can reach out to me at Jillian at SparkleBusinessSolutions.com or connect on LinkedIn. Um, and I actually just built a tool specifically for the nation uh, about generating your first customer uh, journey. Uh, so be, uh, be aware that I just built this, uh, but if you visit this landing page uh, and fill out all the information about your customer journey, uh, we'll be able to come up with an actual action plan that you can start implementing. So cool is right, Koti. Um, can you jump in there and show us, or is it more like you would just rather have people go in and fill it out? Yeah, maybe like wait an hour and then go fill it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I know you were like working on that between yesterday and today, but that's, yeah, it's amazing and what a sweet thing to offer to the nation and yeah, just your expertise in general has been really great. So thank you. Round of applause. Woo! And yeah, you can jump off screen share and we'll go to question and answer. I know, well, especially those of you guys in CSU know that Jill's been helping a bunch of people in CSU, like the case study she used with Aaron and other people. So she was telling me she really loves like just working with people and taking questions. So I'm glad we have enough time for questions if any of you guys have them. Uh, so fire those into the question and answer box. I see people blowing up the chat box, but yes, mostly just SOs and, and go Jill and lots of clapping. Well deserved clapping. Um, but yeah, use, use the Q&A box if you guys have something that, that came to mind while Joe was going through a deck. I have a couple questions just to, just to get us going with the Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> I just clapped in the middle of the, of the slide deck. Good. I hope you did. Um, <laughs> my first question was, you mentioned Infusionsoft, I think is the name of the tool you were talking about. It sounds like maybe it's a yeah. bit like Calendly. I don't know if you just want to go like a little more into depth into some of the tools that you, that you really prefer, that you, you usually turn people to when it comes to automation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Infusionsoft definitely is a, a core one of, that I use. I am an Infusionsoft certified partner. Um, it is a beautiful tool. It's the number one uh, CRM for small businesses. Um, so it's built around you know small businesses um, incorporating marketing automation with CRM and e-commerce. Uh, so it has, covers a lot of the bases that you need in one place. Uh, and I integrate that with Zapier. Um, you can see I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> I love Zapier. Uh, and basically, and you're able to automate any aspect of you know tasks that are, might be recurrent uh, in your business. Um, a lot of admin time can be saved that way. I know, like in my my past business, um, we were, I automated like 50 hours of work per week, which could have been an administrator, uh, and it was something to do with just like adding appointments to the calendar that had been a manual process prior to. So it's really, uh, really powerful tool. Definitely worth it. It's basically the same question Trish just put in the Q&A box, but is that like the one tool you would most recommend? Like if there's one top, top tool? Uh, top tool, yeah, Zapier uh, and, and Infusionsoft. Okay, cool. All right, we have a question coming up through here. My company, we sell hardware to, dis to distributors slash end users, typically include multiple CTAs in one email newsletter. You mentioned only offering one call to action. So would the alternative for us be to send more emails? Um, we would have a huge catalog of products and so focusing on just one each week feels kind of like a waste. 
that makes sense. So like, would you recommend one yeah. call to action and more emails in each, in, or one call to action in each email or less emails with multiple calls to action? I definitely recommend testing out, focusing on one product and seeing if you increase the sales of that one product versus if it's dispersed among those three or however many you have in that, in that typical newsletter. Um, because you might find if you, um, and even tracking what type of products your clients are interested in uh, and being able to follow up with them specific to those products um, would be a great way to convert. But yeah, typically if people have too many choices, they won't make any. Um, so if you don't even give them a choice and you direct them in one direction and you promote and they're able to have a clear focus, people's attention spans are so brief now that you, if you have, give them one action, uh, you may find that it's more effective. And I definitely would recommend trying it to see how people respond. That uh, makes a lot of sense for, for you know, the times. Um, any other questions? Keep, keep typing questions and if you guys have them, yes, sage wisdom, I agree. Um, I had one that came up, like I was just thinking, it's obviously kind of in your nature and, and with what you do to think about how to automate every single aspect of a customer journey or the process itself. Is there any part of that customer journey that you actually tend to like not automate or tell people that that's, that's the part to like kind of leave as a manual thing to make sure that you're doing it I don't know, one at a time or, or with that individual touch? I, I, I think that automation can be incorporated in personalization as well. So like that's a lot of what I've been doing with Erin. She wants a personal message for everyone. Um, so I've made like custom fields where you're able to add in that text and it's, it, you know, the re everything else functions as it would, uh, but you're able to customize it on a more like minuscule level. Like you can be tracking this information about your clients and it doesn't need to be impersonal. Uh, you know, knowing the types of products they're interested, what they purchased in the past, um, you know, if they had a specific date when you needed to follow up with them or uh, things like that, you can actually time everything around that. Um, so it looks as though you're actually being even more proactive and more personal uh, with them than you could if you're trying to remember to email something at a, at a future date. That makes sense. Um, and Trish has another fire question down here. She, she's asking, what's the most common mistake you see? Um, most common mistake? I, feel, I think a lot of people just get lost um, and they just don't even do it. So the common mistake would be just, they don't, they're not open to the idea of automation or how it can help them specifically. They, they might think it, it applies to someone else's business or what someone else is doing, but they don't see how it could be applied to what they're doing. So that's why I really recommended with the homework, just really thinking about what your processes are right now. Yeah, like you said at the beginning, taking that 50,000 foot view of what, what's all involved and then really breaking it down and seeing how automation can help. Yeah, it makes exactly. excellent sense. Any other comments, questions from the peanut gallery out there? Maybe you've just blown everybody's minds, Jill. I don't know, a lot, a lot of quiet chat boxes. But that was super, informative and really like interesting for people like hopefully to think about um, how this relates to what they're doing, whether it's, you know, trying to get a book out into the world or trying to get people to sign up for email list or whatever the thing might be. Um, Cause I feel like, yeah, there's, there's some magic here and this is kind of obviously the way that things are going. Oh, new question. What is the call to action you would recommend for a travel agency? Uh, it depends. Like what are you trying to send them to? Is it like a, a travel agency? I guess uh, I, in the generator that I built for uh, everyone to take a part of, um, it, it comes up with some strategies. Um, so like you're looking, I'm not sure travel agency specifically, um, but if there's any types of like tips and tricks that you can send as a PDF for people to sign up uh, to be added to the list, uh, that could be a good place to start. Um, or with travel agency, maybe you need to get them on the phone for like a, an assessment or like a, a consultation you know, about their trip. Um, so that could be a good call to, to action, you know, book your, your consult. Um, so yeah, uh, that could be good ways. Basically, you're exchanging something of value for free uh, in exchange for their email address because that is a value. People don't want to be uh, relinquishing more information than they uh, have. And then that gets them on your list where you're able to engage with them and then start to warm them up to the idea of purchasing from you. <laughs> Awesome. A couple more things in the chat box. Well, Angela is just saying she'll be consulting you when she's further along in setting up her business and getting it going. And then we have another question. What email automation software do you recommend for a small business? 
So when it comes mm -hmm. specifically, I guess, to auto emails and that kind of thing. Yeah, it does way more than just uh, email automation, but you're able to trigger from actions. Uh, so if you're not able to hire administrators yet, and need all the help you can get. Uh, the automation with Infusionsoft is super powerful and will be the best employee you've ever had. Do you have like a product code that you can send to the nation? Are, are you getting are you getting a little kickback from these guys? Or I am a partner, um, so if anyone yeah. does need the application or the service, I'm more than happy to help. And definitely, it's got a great for the nation. One more question coming in from Tom here it says, "How do things change regarding automation when you scale up from solopreneur to a small team?" Uh, yeah, so having those things in place from the beginning, like having internal forms, you can include uh, one thing I recommended in the past is having like, the script that you'd like them to follow in your internal form or, um, you know, being able to, um, I guess, automate the onboarding of new employees is another aspect too, uh, so that they can consume specific content uh, prior to starting and they know exactly what the procedures are. Um, with Infusionsoft, like we have tasks automated specifically for actions where people are in the sales pipeline. Um, and in opportunities, you've got checklists that need to be complete to progress them through. So it becomes very clear for them what's expected. Cool. And I think you just sort of touched on this a bit, but James is asking, what are some of the unique uses of automation that you've seen? So sort of outside of the marketing type activities, he's trying to wrap his head around the spectrum of what types of work can be applied to automation. Any problem you have, it's really interesting because the community is always solving some interesting things. Um, and there's always a million ways to solve a specific problem. Uh, so yeah, if, if there's some something that you're doing, you find you do more than a couple times, like if you're sending the same email maybe five times, that's when the opportunity for automation presents itself or when you're sending text messages and people are missing their appointments or um, I guess I need to know the business specifically to come up with a solution for whatever the problem is. Thank you. So that's a good segue basically to, to wrap this up. So reach out to Jill if you want her to help you with your yeah. specific business or interest. She's on Slack as she mentioned, or you can reach her on email as well. Um, wait, we have one more, one more question that just came through. How about automation related to internal company communications? So HR and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, so if you have like a task, uh, there are like project management tools out there, um, tons of them like uh, Trello, Sana, I don't really use many of those, but you can automate uh, the actions that are added to there and, and tracking their completion. Um, so that can be custom created to what you're already using or, you know, building upon uh, with new tools. Awesome. Well, I think the number of questions that ended up coming through um, definitely shows that, yeah, people are very interested and there's a lot of thinking out there around automation, how it can best help people. And everybody agrees. Thanks, Joe. You're the best. Um, chat box is blown up. Thank you guys out there who joined. Appreciate it. And we'll be back two weeks time for a really interesting knowledge drop about the rickshaw run that I just finished with uh, Jared Nixon and Will Ferguson. So if you want to come learn about what it's like to ride a rickshaw through India, see you in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody.